Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today I'm going to be looking at the Serpent from Deck Idea. Deck Idea is the design company of designer Jason Cheng out of Taiwan. Uh, he's a relatively new designer, and you may remember his first big deck that was on Kickstarter at the end of last year, uh, the 1969 space-themed deck. Really cool, fun deck, and you can check out the review of that one on my channel. But this was his big follow-up with the Serpent. Uh, interestingly, this one started out as a challenge that he put to himself to design a deck in 100 minutes. And so the basic concept for this thing, he actually designed in just a quick 100 minute period. Uh, you can see the full time lapse of that video if you go back through his old Instagram posts. Pretty cool to see uh, that. And then uh, he kind of continued on Instagram and showed a lot of the process of how he evolved the design, both the courts and the backs, everything about it. Uh, really cool ideas in how uh, collaborative that he is with this and really all of his designs. Very uh, interesting to see and kind of get an insight into some of the process. Uh, but this deck right here is obviously inspired by snakes. So let's jump into it, find out what it's all about. Uh, the deck comes in a bunch of different versions you can see here. This was the first one, the green version, but then he also followed that up with a white version and a rainbow version, and then went on to a cobra version of the deck with the purple and gold versions up here. Uh, so lots of different decks to go through, uh, but I'm gonna put these off to the side. We're gonna focus on the green version first. Uh, and so here it is. Now the tuck is just a regular glossy finish tuck case no embossing of any sort on there. Uh, and it says very simply, The Serpent, name of the deck at the top. Uh, originally, he had considered the name Ouroboros for the deck. Ouroboros is uh, the image that you may have seen of a circular snake that's eating its own tail. Uh, so just like kind of the snake going in a circle. It's a really common symbol in from ancient Egypt, among other places, and a symbol of either infinity or the cycle of life, uh, things like that. Uh, but... Uh, there was another deck with the same name, so he settled on the Serpent. Uh, and then the background here is just a really dark, just a black tuck. And then you have this grass coming through in dark green. And then the image of a snake burying its fangs there. A green snake. I uh, love the detail on the scales and everything. And that image of the snake wraps around the side of the tuck case. And even to the back as well, where you see him kind of curl there in the grass around the other side and finishes back with the tail in the front. So that is the snake kind of snapping at its own tail there. Very cool image. I love how it incorporates all four sides of the tuck case. Uh, turning the sides in addition, you also have uh, deck idea copyright there, as well as mentioning this was issued in January, 2020. Other side just has the name of the deck, the serpent. Uh, the bottom has your ad copy for Cardamundi and mentions this particular version is limited to 600 copies. And on the top, it says deck idea, but you can't see it because it's covered up by the uh, custom tuck seal here. And this one is uh, just the an orange version of the deck idea logo. Uh, nothing printed on the inner flaps or the interior of the tuck. And so that completes the tuck. Really uh, fairly simple design, simple illustration, but I think it's well done, kind of a fun design to the whole thing. All right, jumping into the cards, we'll start with the back design. It is a black card, both face and back, uh, and features kind of a dual image of a snake in the grass. You see more of that flowing grass, just like we saw on the tuck case, and then a pair of snakes that are kind of slithering from the left and the right with their tongue stuck out. Uh, the body of the snake extends all the way to the edge of the card, so you don't have a strict poker border in any sense. And it's that body extending to the edge that really creates the unique effect of this deck. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, this deck is designed to kind of look interesting in fans. So it started with noticing how a fan or a spread kind of looks like a snake. And so he built on that to form these decks that when fanned, that little part will create the body of the snake, which is a really, really cool idea. It gives you some kind of interesting things that you can do, particularly with fans uh, in this deck. So very, very interesting uh, use of the back design there. All right, getting back to the deck, uh, you do get a pair of extra cards. Uh, you get something that is uh, gonna be kind of a mainstay in all of the Kickstarter decks. That's the Hall of Fame card uh, for the Serpent. So this will list off the first 50 people who back the deck. And you may recognize a few of the names in there uh, as well. 
And then jump into the other one. It is just a regular ad card for deck idea and mentions the name, the serpent of the deck and has the design of the four suits that we're going to see as we go through. Uh, the two Joker cards are a nod to the Ouroboros. Uh, it is sort of one quadrant of the snake that's eating its own tail. Uh, and so you can see snake coming in from the left and biting its tail is kind of coming in from the bottom right there. Now the rest of the deck is gonna feature a lot of the same style of illustration. So here's the Ace of Spades. Uh, features a large snake that's kind of poking its head out of the grass. Same snake I think we've been looking at this whole time. And he's looking right straight forward. Uh, you have in bright white the Pippin Index in the corner, and it is a custom styled Pip. Uh, all of the Pips are done without little stems at the bottom, so it looks a little bit like an upside down heart, but still definitely recognizable as a spade. Uh, and then going through the number cards, uh, fairly standard. It's all just white on a black background. Uh, you do get a little bit of a slightly unusual layout of some of the Pips here, like the nine in a grid like that, but nothing too special on the Pips. And then you get into the courts. And the courts, of course, feature snakes again, uh, reflected two-way courts uh, with the snake coming in from the left and the right. And they're all kind of in different poses. All the queens, I believe, have a crown as well as the kings. Uh, so they have crowns that are kind of styled after what you might see like on a classic chess piece. Uh, but they're all gonna be in different poses. This is one of my favorites. I love the jack with the tongue wrapped around the snake on the other side. Very cool way to kind of incorporate the two images together. And it's kind of a cool touch. One of the things you can do is you can take out one of the court cards, flip the deck over, and when you're using it in fans, that court card is meant to line up with the rest of that fan. So you can kind of change the head on the, uh, on the snakes if you want. Uh, so kind of an interesting, different little touch there as well with the courts. Uh, now jumping over to the red cards, uh, they are a little bit more orange, I guess I would say, uh, but otherwise pretty standard. Hearts are custom, but definitely easily recognizable. And then into more courts. So it's slightly different poses. I mean, just little differences from one to the next. There's the clubs. Again, no stem on the club. And the club courts. Well, plain on the jack. But I do like the, uh, the different angling of the queen of clubs there with them kind of crossing over each other. And then into the diamonds, back to that orange on black and finishing with the three quarts. Uh, so that's it. That is the, that is the uh, look at the green version of the deck. Uh, I like the black on uh, the black background of the cards. I will say, you know, there are some slight issues that come up with like chipping and things like that on the cards themselves. You'll see that already. Just really common with the black cards. Uh, but it is a really interesting deck. I love the fanning effect. I think it's really, really interesting uh, and just something unique to incorporate the design to make a larger design in that way. Uh, but that is just one version of the deck. We have several more. So these are the other two versions of the standard serpent design. Uh, you have the white version and the rainbow version. Uh, the white version is what I guess I would consider the other standard version. And it, along with the rainbow, are really more of color swaps than anything else. So you're going to see the same design from the tuck to the cards, but it's a different style snake and a different background. The snake itself now is gray with these orange stripes. I think the orange stripes give it a little bit more character to it. And the background is no longer a snake in the grass, but into a snake on this gray background with kind of rocks or pebbles speckled in throughout. Uh, so you'll see the different color on the on the uh, card tuck itself, but then on the cards as well, you now have a little bit of a white poker border, which I think is, uh, is nice. That'll prevent that sort of chipping that you get from the black card background. Uh, and then of course the gray snake with the orange stripe on it. Uh, so you can still use it in fans, still looks beautiful. If you get your fan wide enough, uh, you'll actually get to see little elements of that orange pop through on your snake so you can get a little bit of a more interesting look to it there. Uh, and then the card faces are all redesigned or recolored in that same style. So you've got the gray snake and then on the quartz, uh, you can see the uh, orange striping on there as well as the orange tongue. Uh, so a little bit more color to it. Background's been swapped out with that pebble look and the rest of the pips and indices have been recolored to kind of fit the theme of the deck. So now you have a gray background with a white border. Uh, so 
Really nice uh, job on this deck as well. I will say this particular version has a slight flaw in that you can really clearly see where the court cards are when you turn it to the side like this, uh, just because of a little bleeding of ink on the edge. A uh, little bit of a flaw on this one uh, in terms of usefulness for gameplay, but I like this uh, color version personally a little bit more. I think the dual color of the snake really is what does it for me. Uh, so that's the white version of the deck. Uh, there is one more version, the more limited one. This one I haven't actually cracked open. I don't think I'm going to, and that's the rainbow version of the serpent. Uh, that's this one here. So in addition to being limited to just 200 copies, uh, you'll see it's got the rainbow colored serpent on a black background. See the vibrant colors as it wraps around here. Really cool look to it. And it includes the gold uh, hand numbered and signed seal there uh, that denotes this as the more limited of the three. Uh, so that's the three colors of the serpent version, but we're still not done. There was also a stretch goal with the campaign to create these. This is the Cobra version of the deck uh, and features a new design on a pair of colors, the purple and the gold. Again, really similar design between the two of these and even honestly fairly similar to the serpent itself. But instead of the regular snake that we saw there, we're now gonna uh, look at the King Cobra. And so now the tuck doesn't have that snake wrapped all the way around the tuck, instead features the coiled, Cobra on the front in either purple or gold. And then on the back, you can see its tail kind of spiraling off there. Uh, but otherwise, pretty nice uh, bright orange, I guess, on what he called the gold, and then deep purple for the purple version of the deck. Uh, they are both fairly limited, flip them this way. Uh, you can see the purple is limited to 250 copies and the orange to just 200. Uh, but only the orange includes the numbered and signed tuck seals. You can see I've got 43 out of 200 signed by Jason right below, and then a standard tuck seal on the purple version. Uh, jumping into the cards themselves, they do feature a very similar design, I will say, but the snake now has that extra hood added. Almost looks like he just added the hood there to make it into a cobra uh, and then recolored it with the purple and gold on those as well. Uh, looks, as usual, really nice in a fan. Uh, these do have the white poker border and the deep purple background. And then same thing continues with the uh, quartz and the ace. Uh, so you've got the colors completely swapped out. Uh, relatively similar poses uh, to what we saw with the serpent deck, but of course now they're cobras instead of serpents. Uh, and I think that, that hood flare is Really interesting look on these. Uh, so we'll go through all of the deck, but you can see very similar there. Now this one actually does, the purple deck only out of all of them has a bit of an error. There is no eight of diamonds here. You'll see it goes six, seven, straight to nine. And instead on the back, there is a duplicate ace of spades. So that was a little bit of a misprint uh, that wasn't caught early. Uh, really nice move, I would say by Jason. He's going to uh, completely reprint the deck for backers. So not even just print a single card because there may be color variations. He's gonna reprint the entire deck for backers. So I think that was a really classy move and a great uh, level of transparency for Jason uh, to take that on uh, to make the deck right. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to add that in there. If you were a backer and you got that error deck, uh, you can expect to see a replacement deck at some point in the future. Uh, now the gold version is even more limited, but very similar design. Does have the hand signed tuck seal in silver this time, and the cards themselves, similar design to what we looked at before, but now have been color swapped in with bright shades of orange. I think it's all orange, no contrasting colors on this one. Really bright, really vibrant. And of course, you get the beautiful fan effect with those as well. Uh, going to the cards themselves, all orange cards. Uh, and all orange quartz as well. So you get that same look. So really beautiful, bright, vibrant on the serpent decks. Uh, so that is the extra pair or the stretch goal pair in looking at the Cobras. All right, so hopping back over to the standard version of the deck, let's talk about what we think of the deck overall. Well, the deck is printed by Cardamundi on their B9 stock and their classic linen finish. So it's gonna handle beautifully. It's got their newer slimline stock. So the cards are really, really thin, not those ultra chunky cards that you saw with some of the older Cardamundi stocks. Uh, but as you would expect for a deck designed for fanning, 
uh, it really does handle quite nicely. Uh, usefulness of the deck, obviously cardistry is gonna be its main play. That's gonna be where it's mostly gonna find its home. Uh, it was designed for fans and I think that really shows, uh, but you can use this in other packet cuts and things like that for cardistry and kind of get some interesting looks with those snakes poking out all over the place. Uh, you could use this for gameplay. They're definitely readable enough. I mentioned that flaw with, on some versions of the deck, the bleed of the court cards kind of limiting its usefulness for uh, for gameplay or even magic, honestly. Uh, but the deck is functional and readable enough for that for sure. Uh, what do I think of the deck overall? I think it's a really unique and interesting concept. Uh, you know, would I recommend that everybody needs to get all five versions of the deck? I don't know. I mean, you know, they're, they're a really similar design across all of them. So it really is a little bit more color swap than anything else. So unless you're a collector and has to get them all, I don't know whether you need to get all of them as opposed to, you know, find a couple of colors that you like. Uh, personally, I think the classic green is really beautiful, although that chipping I'm sure will annoy me a little bit. Uh, I really, really like the white version. Uh, and I guess I would say the purple version are probably my two favorites. Uh, but kind of up to personal preference on which ones of the designs are your favorites and which ones you want to pick up. Uh, so go check out Deck Idea and his website if you're interested in finding out more about this deck or other projects that he's working on. And if you haven't already, I recommend checking out Jason's newest project on Kickstarter. It's the Sandwich Deck. Uh, much in keeping with the sort of unique ideas that he does on decks. He has the sandwich series, uh, which has the bread deck that looks like realistic bread, as well as a spam and egg deck. It's, I will just say, goofy, interesting, funny uh, deck to take a look at. Uh, so go check that out on Kickstarter if you haven't already. I'll put a link down in the description. But for now, that's it for the look at the serpent. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what other decks you want to see in the future and subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. I'll see you for the next one.